in Lewis Carroll's book, Through the Looking Glass. This is a character who says he likes to think about three impossible things every morning before breakfast, clear out his mind. In a similar way, it's, it's good to think about infinity a couple of times a day, all living beings. helps to clear out our minds as well. When you see things in the larger picture, it's easier to look at your own picture. Take your own problems, your own sorrows, your own difficulties, and get them in perspective. Sometimes when you live with your problems, they loom very large in the mind and they become overwhelming. But if you see them in light of the problems of all living beings in all directions, it's strange. It makes your own problems easier to bear and gives you a better handle on how to bear with them. We take a lesson from the Buddha's own awakening. On the night of his awakening, he had those three knowledges. The first one was a narrative knowledge about his own lives. He'd been born here, had this name, had this appearance, ate this kind of food, had this experience of pleasure and pain, and then died. And then was reborn someplace else, and then went through the same thing over and over again. That in and of itself gave him a larger picture on the difficulties of the one lifetime he's experiencing right now. And from there he went on to the second knowledge, the passing away and re-arising of all living beings. Not just his own story, but the story of all the beings in the cosmos. He realized it wasn't just himself who'd had a long line of births and deaths and rebirths and redeaths. Everybody undergoes this process. But seeing everybody undergoing it so it allowed him to see larger patterns. And it was from seeing the larger patterns that then he focused on the present moment. To see how he could undo those larger patterns as they played out in the present moment. And that was the insight that finally awakened him, focusing back on the present after having taken that larger view. So as we would go through our own practice, it's good to try to take that larger view. Many times we go straight from our story of who we are and our issues from day-to-day -day life and then go straight into the present moment without stepping back to get the larger picture. And as a result, we miss a lot of things. We carry a lot of our narrow attitudes into the present moment. Our ideas about who we are, where we've come from, where we want to go. And without seeing those issues in the larger picture, it can create a lot of problems in the present moment. For example, the simple issue of impatience in the practice. We may have read certain things about meditation, or we may have had experience in meditation in the past, but it's not happening now. The things we've read about are not happening. We read about levels of concentration, levels of mindfulness, and we look at our own mind and it's there for one breath and two breaths, and then it's gone. So we compare ourselves with what we've read, and then we compare ourselves with where we'd like to be, and we don't like the comparison. It makes us impatient. A lot of the problem is just that, running back and forth between what we remember from the past, what we anticipate in the future, and we don't like where we are in the present, and that gets us impatient. 
It's not that the Buddha doesn't want us to have goals. The end of suffering is a huge goal. We have to accept where we are at the present moment and realize that you're not going to get there unless you look very carefully at the present moment. So you've got to put aside memories of the past, anticipations of the future, and just look at what you've got right now. This breath, this breath, and whatever level of mindfulness or concentration you have, try to develop what you've got. Don't despise it. Don't look down on it, saying, this isn't enough, I want more, and then trash what you've got. You've got to protect what you've got. You've got to maintain it, even if it's little, especially if it's little. You've got to look after it. And as for how long it's going to take for this little moment of mindfulness to grow, well, remember, you've, how many lifetimes have you been through so far? That's an awful lot. It's uncountable. But at least you've got the opportunity right now to push things a little bit in the right direction. So whether the seeds of mindfulness are as large as you'd like them to be, that's not the issue. The issue is that you take care of what you've got. After all, remember, redwood trees come from little tiny seeds. Much smaller than the large seeds that you get for some very small plants. So don't despise the little seeds of mindfulness you've got. Just take very good care of them. Nurture each seed as you find it. This breath, this breath, this breath. Be content to be with this breath. Because you focus in on the present moment like this, this is how things have an opportunity to grow. After all, where did the Buddha find his awakening? In the present moment. After having taken the larger view, then he was able to focus down on what he actually had, right here, right now. And the larger view gives you perspective, reminds you that this is a large project we're taking on. And the trick to taking on large projects is to break them down into small pieces and take each piece at a time. If you try to tackle the whole mountain all at once and you find you can't do it, you just get up and get discouraged and that's it. You never get up the mountain. But if you take it one step at a time, and there'll be setbacks and other problems along the way. You run across crevasses and other problems that you didn't anticipate, but you take it one step at a time and you find that you can get around those problems. The larger picture is there to remind you that it is possible. And as for whether it's going to take one day or one month or one year or one lifetime or more, don't make that an issue. Just say, oh, you've got what you've got right now. Make the most of it. And good things will grow from that. So try to see things in terms of the larger picture. and learn what helpful lessons you can garner from the larger picture. And then come back to write what you've got here right now. This is how patience is developed. Again, patience doesn't mean that you simply sit around saying, okay, what everything I've got is here is okay, I just have to be accept what it is and leave it at that. You accept what's there, but then you learn how to develop it. And if the development is slow, or if this stage in the development is slow, learn to accept that fact as well, but keep at it. Because the other thing you've got to learn to, how to accept about the present is not just what's there, but also there is a potential for growth. So much of the talk about acceptance neglects that fact, that we have the potential to learn from each little mistake we make, the potential to pick ourselves up and then move on and to develop skill, step by step by step. 
And as for our desires for how quickly we want it to be done, again, that's referring to the past and the future when you want to focus in on the present. It's that narrative that says, I want the results right now because I don't have much time. And although it's true, we don't know how much time we have still. You do have the present moment. And some things take time. It's like the old story of the person growing rice. You plant the, the rice grain and the plant comes up, comes up one inch, two inches. But you know it has to be a couple feet tall before it gives rice grain. So you pull it so it's going to be several feet tall. What happens? You pull out the roots and the plant dies. You never get the rice. So if the practice is in the stage where it's going to grow slowly. Okay, nurture it. Allow it to grow slowly. Be patient. Be very careful. The more precisely you focus in on the present moment, the more things will grow. So the larger picture actually means being very precisely attentive to the small picture. And this is one of the principles that comes from a complex causal pattern that the Buddha taught about. The large patterns are played out in the very small scales as well. So focus on the small scale and you'll find that the larger pattern will take care of itself. The important thing is consistency, that you really stick with it and don't let yourself get discouraged. Then you find that what initially may have seemed impossible actually does become a possibility because you're focusing on the actuality of what you've got right now. and learning how to make the most of it.